Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. Uh, today's topic is placental insufficiency. Uh, but before starting, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, uh, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And now I come to the topic, what is placental insufficiency? Well, you know the placenta, uh, we need to understand first what is placenta, you know. Well, it's an organ and it grows in the womb during the pregnancy. And the placental insufficiency, which is also known as, uh, or also called as placental dysfunction or uteroplacental vascular insufficiency, there are different names used for this condition. It's an uncommon, but it is a serious complication of the pregnancy. And uh, it occurs when the placenta does not develop properly or uh, when it's damaged. And this blood flow disorder is marked by reduction in the mother's blood supply. And the complication can also occur when the mother's blood supply does not adequately increase by mid-pregnancy. And when the placenta malfunctions, uh, it's unable to supply the adequate oxygen and the nutrients to the baby from the mother's bloodstream. And uh, without this vital support, the baby cannot grow and thrive. And this can lead to the low birth weight, a premature birth, or maybe the birth defects. So it also carries an increased risk of complications for the mother. So diagnosing this problem early is very important uh, for the health of the child and the mother both, you know. Uh, the next thing is, uh, what is the vital function? Why it's vital? The placenta, you know. You know, the placenta is, uh, is a highly complex biological organ. And it forms and it grows where the fertilized egg attaches to the wall of the uterus. And the umbilical cord grows from the placenta uh, to the baby's navel and it allows the blood, uh, the blood to flow from the mother to the baby and uh, back to the mother again. And the mother's blood and the baby's blood are filtered through the placenta but they never actually mix. Now the placenta prim uh, uh, primarily its work is that it moves oxygen into the baby's bloodstream it carries carbon dioxide away, it passes nutrients to the baby, and it transfers the waste of for the disposal by the mother's body. So the placenta has an important role in the hormone production as well, and uh, it also protects the fetus from harmful bacteria and uh, the infections as well. So the healthy placenta continues to grow without and uh, throughout the pregnancy. You know. and, uh, well, it, normally it weighs from one to two pounds at the time of birth. And the placenta is removed during the labor. And it's delivered between five and the 30 minutes after the birth. Now, next thing is what are the causes of the, the placental insufficiency? Well, it's linked to blood flow problems. You know, the maternal blood and the vascular disorders can trigger it and uh, medications and the lifestyle habits can also uh, possibly trigger. And the most common conditions which are linked to the placental insufficiency are in diabetes, uh, chronic high blood pressure, uh, blood clotting disorders, certain medications like uh, blood thinners, smoking and the drug abuse especially cocaine, heroin and other uh, uh, drugs you know. And the placental insufficiency may also occur in if the placenta does not attach properly to the uh, wall of the uterus or if the placenta breaks away by its uh, like uh, which is known as placental uh, like uh, abruption you know that is what are the symptoms of the placental insufficiency well there are no maternal symptoms associated with the placental insufficiency but certain clues can lead to the early diagnosis and the mother may notice that the size of the heart fetus is smaller than the previous pregnancy if the mother is experienced one. 
if it is not first uh, pregnancy, you know. And the fetus may also be moving less than expected. So if the baby is not growing properly, the mother's abdomen will be small and the baby's movements will be will not be felt much. And the vaginal bleeding or the like uh, uh, preterm labor contractions may occur with the placental uh, abruption. The next thing is what are the complications? Well, we can divide it in two, like complications for the mother and complications for the child. Now we will come to the mother's complication first. You know, the placental insufficiency is not usually uh, considered life-threatening to the mother. Uh, but the risk is uh, greater if the mother has hypertension or if uh, uh, she has diabetes. So during pregnancy, the mother is more likely to experience uh, preeclampsia, which means uh, uh, elevated blood pressure and uh, protein in the urine. And placental abruption, which means the placenta pulls away from the uterine wall. Okay, so or the preterm labor and the delivery. So these are the complications in case of uh, uh, complication of the mothers, you know. And the, sympti uh, the symptoms of the preeclampsia are uh, like uh, excess weight gain, leg and hand swelling, headaches, and high blood pressure. And uh, now we come to the complications for the baby. Well, the earlier in the pregnancy, when the placental insufficiency occurs, the more severe problems can be for the baby. And uh, the complications may include uh, greater risk of oxygen deprivation at the birth, uh, which can cause cerebral palsy and other complications, you know, learning disabilities, low body temperature known as hypothermia, low blood sugar, hypoglycemia, a too little blood calcium known as hypoglycemia, and excess of red blood cells like uh, polycythemia, uh, premature labor, caesarean delivery, stillbirth, or maybe death in uh, extreme cases, you know. So these are the complications for the baby. Well, the next thing is how do doctors diagnose? Well, getting the proper parental care can lead to early diagnosis and it can improve the outcomes of the mother and the baby both. And the tests that can detect the placental insufficiency include the pregnancy ultrasound, uh, to measure the size, size of the placenta, ultrasound to monitor the size of the fetus, and alpha, uh, uh, like fetoprotein levels in the mother's blood, which means uh, a protein made in the baby's liver, you know. So the fetal uh, non-stress test uh, is another test, which means that it involves the wearing of two belts on the mother's abdomen and sometimes a gentle buzzer to wake the baby. So to measure the baby's heart rate and contraction. So this is a very important test. And the, treating the high blood pressure or the diabetes can help to improve the baby's growth. Okay, so a maternity care plan uh, is very important and your doctor may recommend like educational preeclampsia as well as uh, self-monitoring for the disease, uh, more frequent doctor visits, uh, bed rest to like uh, to conserve the fuel and energy for the baby and consultation with the high risk maternal fetal specialists so this is a uh, like a maternity care plan you know that uh, uh, will be designed for you and uh, you may need to keep a daily record when your baby moves or when baby kicks you and if there is a concern about the premature birth which means that before uh, before 32 weeks, uh, the mother may receive steroid injections. So the purpose of the steroid injection is that uh, uh, steroids dissolve through the placenta and uh, they uh, like uh, strengthen the baby's lungs, you know. So you may need intensive outpatient and inpatient care if the placenta, sorry, preeclampsia or the intrauterine growth restriction becomes severe. So in that case, uh, you may need intensive care. Uh, well, 
it cannot be cured uh, but it can be managed with the proper care and it's extremely important to receive an early diagnosis and uh, adequate uh, prenatal care and this can improve the baby's chances of normal growth and decrease the risk of uh, uh, birth complications and the best outlook occurs when the condition is caught between the 12 and 20 weeks so then it's uh, with the proper care is the best outcome thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com thank you and goodbye